thought I'd make this video about my Eagle Eyes and Eagle Tree system that I have been configuring on uh, my test bench before I put it into my aircraft. At the moment I'm uh, flying, ah, I've got a flight simulator going on, just to simulate that the, the plane's flying around. Uh, this little arrow here, the chevron here, shows that ah, that's, the, that's the aircraft and roughly where it's flying in relation to the home position here in the middle. So I'm about 5,000 meters um, out at uh, not so high, 40. Uh, let's just increase the speed and get a little bit higher. Um, here we over over here we have the speed in kilometers an hour. And uh, got some other information like uh, flight pack voltage and so on. Not using so much power, so I'm on a I'm on a test bed. Let me just turn the plane around while I go over and video some other parts. There we go. So over here on the test bench, here I have an action camera. And I just put something in front of it at the moment so that I can see a little bit more about the, the OSD stuff. I've got a Spectrum AR8000 transmitter. I'm using um, version 4 Eagle Tree data logger. Uh, OSD Pro, I also have the Guardian and I have the GPS uh, sensor out here. On video, uh, going through the OSD Pro and uh, it's being sent out by 1.2 gigahertz um, 200 milliwatt transmitter and that's coming into a 1.2 gigahertz patch antenna uh, around the back here I've put on the the four channel receiver. I just got it set to channel one. Uh, when I got it from BEVRC, I just came already set up, just plugged it in and worked straight away, so that's great. Here I have the Eagle Eyes, the ground station. Um, so this is where the, the video receiver is plugged into. And then I got uh, four AVI out so I can have my, my goggles, my LCD TV, that kind of thing. Uh, I've only got one input just now. Um, I've only got one receiver but I'll add that uh, another one later. Here I just got myself an AB, ABS box off of eBay and uh, drilled some holes and stuff like that ready to, to mount the um, antenna and also drilled some holes here in the side so that uh, I can get access to these uh, these plugs here, these sockets. Uh, what I've also got is um, I'm running my my PC in live mode, um, just uh, making sure that I can get some uh, some some live data back. I haven't played around with this too much yet, so uh, I'll look into what kind of things that I might find useful. Uh, today what I've done is I'm just setting up uh, the Eagle Eyes to make sure that the um, pan servo works properly and is properly calibrated and also the tilt servo. And what I've been doing is I've just been using the uh, flight simulation mode just to, just to see that uh, it'll actually follow the aircraft. So just make sure that goes a bit more black. There we go. Uh, what I've also been playing around with is the re return to home feature and I activate that by um, pulling back on the throttle uh, switch on my, on my DX8. So I will do that and you'll see in the screen there that now it's RTH engaged, return to home engaged. And so what will happen now is you'll see the, the simulated radio controlled plane coming back to to return to home and what I wanted to do today was just to check that my pan and tilt servos in my tracker system work before I assemble it all together and just make sure that it's all all working and yeah I know how to screw things together uh, so what will happen now is that uh, we're approximately 1,500 meters away and as soon as we start to go over uh, the top of where we're 
should be standing out in the field, then what should happen is the you should see now it's starting to to tilt up. Now the aircraft is almost directly overhead. Now it's flying overhead, and now the pan servo is spinning itself around, and then we're starting to fly a little bit away. So tilt servo is coming back down again. And you see now the aircraft is flying a little bit away and what, what it will do is it will just loop around um, and uh, then I can take back control of it again. As I say, this is just a simulation of being uh, come and return to home because the throttle sticks fully down and I just wanted to see that uh, my servos work properly. I'll just show one more, one more test. I have to hold, I have to hold this part down, just to make sure I don't fall over. And now the aircraft should be flying overhead, if you see on the screen. And patch antenna should tilt up to try and catch it. And as the aircraft goes away, it'll continue to follow it. Hope you found this uh, video useful. Um, and uh, I will post up some more once I've got things connected uh, in a pretty good way. Um, just some information I am using for the pan servo. I'm using this uh, GWS um, pan servo. It's a, a sail winch servo. Uh, I got it off of eBay. I think it cost me about um, maybe about 150 kroner, something like that, uh, Swedish kroner. Uh, then I'm using uh, these, this tilt servo, it's a Tower Pro SG 5010. Um, I got a good neighbor who is very good with metalwork, so he was kind enough to make me uh, this brackets here. Then this brackets nicely, and uh, and this one as well to hold the, the patch antenna. Uh, I took the the measurements off of uh, some places off the internet. Um, I bought this box off of eBay as well, and um, maybe that cost me about 100 kroner or something like that. Just an ABS box. It's got a cover that goes over with four screws. Uh, I got I got a place to put in the battery here, and I'm going to put the eagle eyes here. Um, I got a I got a shaft uh, uh, milled for this part as well so the yeah the, the tracker unit this part here will just uh, screw up on top of there. Uh, what else? I think that's about it. Maybe I just do a, a last check so you don't have to go back to the beginning of the video. Uh, I got the eagle eyes uh, eagle tree e-logger version 4 uh, and I just put on some uh, Dean's connectors onto my just a battery here, I'm just using for my test bench. So I decided to have the battery going into the data logger so that I can then understand how much um, amps and so on, uh, how much battery I'm using through this particular circuit. And then going off from there, uh, I basically um, uh, put put one 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 side off to the the ESC and then obviously the ESC is going in and, and powering all of the, the servos and things like that. I'm using just um, uh, 9G servos I got off the off of eBay as well. Um, then going from the Spectrum AR8000 I've got all of the uh, servo leads pretty much going into the OSD Pro and then from the OSD Pro, uh, then all the servers are connected. There's a lot of good uh, videos on, on YouTube that I've been watching on how to configure this, so I, I won't make a video on that. Uh, just search around. I think there's a guy called Peter Lucian, I think his name is. It's, he's got some good videos on all the test benches of this stuff. Then uh, uh, I just made this uh, custom harness. This was the, the plug that came with the 
video transmitter. I got this one from BEVRC. Um, can't remember how much it costs now. Not too expensive anyway, so worth buying it from there. Uh, so I had this custom, um, this custom cable, and it had a really big, bulky RCA lead and power connector and everything like that. So just cut that straight off. And I've got to just use this power connection here, and that's what's coming off of the other side of the the e logger. I got that connected in so that then I, I can power the video transmitter. Um, also coming off of this uh, this wiring harness, then I I have instead of using the RCA cables that came with this system, basically cut them off. And I um, uh, soldered in some uh, servo connectors onto that for video and audio. Uh, in this case, video and audio out. Uh, what I also did was I got this action cam. Bought this quite a long time ago. I used it when I was mountain biking and so. Uh, it's not super special, but uh, does the trick for now until I get a GoPro. And what I've done is uh, th this has. Two, two, you know, stereo uh, audio output, and, and um, this system requires uh, just one channel of, of audio. That would be the the white cable that's coming in here, and the yellow cable is video. So what I did was I just spliced off. You can see there's only two wires coming out here. Just put a bit of heat shrink uh, to protect the. The, the third wire. Um, I think that's the right channel or something like that of audio. So then let's say I have the video and the left channel coming out. And what I did was instead of having the normal RCA cables that, um, yeah, RCA connectors that are uh, normally come with this cable, I also then just put on some some servo connectors there for video in. Um, what else to say? Uh, I have just on my test bench. I just set up these 9G servos, and I got the the Guardian um, stabilization. Just done with a bit of sticky tape there, just to check that. Uh, see a lot of turbulence when the day or something like that. Uh, this will try to keep the, the aircraft a bit stable. This one I'm just using to simulate for uh, uh, the motor. Uh, again, I took this this information from Peter Lucian from his. Uh, I hope I'm saying his name right. Uh, from his uh, his videos, he's got four videos. I just took the idea from from him. So check it out, check out his video. I think it's really good. Uh, you learn an awful lot from it. I certainly did. So yeah, come to the end of this video. Uh, now the next step is just to. Put all this stuff together. I will uh, just mount the shaft here today, get that hooked up, and in the next video I'll, I'll mount it onto the the tripod, and we can see how it's working a little bit better. Uh, hope you found this video a bit useful. And as I said before, uh, if you want, subscribe, and you'll see some more uh, videos around remote control planes, FPV, and some other. Uh, stuff that I'm gonna purchase and put together. Cheers!